Hanif Echo, The African Perspective. History. Africa's gangrene. Vincent Ballare. As announced in our video discussing the economic growth of Rwanda, which you can easily find by clicking on the link displayed in the top right corner of the screen, our history series will launch with a focus on one key figure of the modern era in Africa's long history of struggles, Vincent Ballare. The heir to the economic infrastructure of the French colonial empire and the so-called French know-how in Africa. Vincent Ballare comes from a fairly wealthy French family, undoubtedly enjoying advantageous connections with the rich and powerful in the business world. He began his career in the infamous Rothschild Bank. In the mid-1980s, he sold the family's paper mills and ventured into the tobacco industry in Africa. He used the profits to invest in timber production and plantations of cotton, palm trees, banana trees, coffee, cocoa, and many more. The list is long, so in parallel, he also ventured into logistics to facilitate the transportation of goods, not only for export purposes, but also for imports, ensuring the continuous flow of French products that somehow can only be found in Africa thanks to the France Afric network. The same lucrative process used by his ancestors 200 years ago. 1990s. Whispers of mistreatment and meager wages gradually emerge. The companies within the group are managed with an iron fist. 1999. The Balare Group takes control of the railway lines in Cameroon and gradually transforms them into freight transport lines at the expense of passengers. Passenger trains are neglected, increasing the number of suspicious accidents. The populations are becoming less interconnected, thus hindering development wherever the group takes control of railway lines. 2000. Balare reveals more about his unique methods by recruiting Mikkel Roussan as the group's vice president. Roussan, a former intelligence service officer and former minister of cooperation who was forced to resign due to corruption cases in Paris, has extensive networks in both France and Africa. 0405. The group takes control of the ports of Abidjan, Ivory Coast, and Douala, Cameroon. 0406. The acquisition of the container terminal tender for the port of Douala goes very wrong for Balare. The group is taken to court by competitors for corruption and favoritism, while even the World Bank had criticized the quality of the group's offer. It is said that the magistrate who took control of the case was unfortunately sanctioned by his hierarchy, most likely corrupted, for daring to summon Balare, and therefore the case was dropped in Cameroon. Oh nine. Balare wants to seize control of the deep water port of Lomé in Togo, but needs help. He then activates his associate Troussan to seek assistance from Sarkozy, the French president at the time, of whom he had apparently already greased the palm by lending him a luxury yacht to celebrate his election as head of the country two years earlier. A month later, after some behind-the-scenes maneuvering, Balare takes over the management of the port. 2010. For over a decade, international NGOs and citizens from Cameroon, Sierra Leone, Cambodia, and others have been denouncing, from their respective countries, the alleged human rights and environmental violations committed by the Balare Group. Finally, in 2010, four NGOs in Cameroon take the group to court. The group then commits to improving working conditions, but to no avail. It will take until 2019 for genuine order to improve these working conditions to be recommended by a court. 2010 to 2011, two identical scenario, in two different countries, expose the deep corruption used by the Balare Group to seize control of key infrastructure in the Gulf of Guinea. 
First, in 2010, as a result of obtaining the Port of Lomé the previous year, the Balleré Group, through Havas, returned the favor by ensuring to manage the election campaign of Forni Asimbe at a massively reduced price. Then, in 2011, only three months after being re-elected, President Alpha Conde signed a decree terminating the contract of Nico Trans, which had obtained a 25-year contract to manage the port of Conakry three years earlier. The Balleré Group, probably aided by its network of influence in France, managed to avoid legal consequences in 2019 regarding this corruption case in Guinea. Unfortunately, in 2021, concerning Togo, things didn't go too well. The group was forced to admit to have used corruption and paid a fine of 12 million euros. However, the three implicated executives are not out of the woods yet. They have been ordered to appear before the court and risk a maximum of five years in prison each, for both the Guinea and Togo cases. Twenty thirteen, Balleray expands to Mozambique, Senegal, and Ivory Coast by operating the port of Pemba, the Roro terminal in Dakar, and a container terminal in Abidjan. Twenty fifteen. Acquisition of the ports of Kribi in Cameroon, Dili in East Timor, and Veru in Haiti. 2017. Expansion of operations at the port of Kribi in Cameroon and establishment at the port of Oindo in Gabon. 2021. The Balare Group is present in 42 ports in Africa, manages 47 customs offices, and has an extensive network of railways, roads, river barges, etc. The group is also involved in areas such as the agribusiness, the media, and many other sectors. However, a multitude of factors will lead Balleray to announce in December 2021 the sale of 100% of its logistics activities in Africa, which have been the source of its fortune for decades. There are certainly multiple ongoing legal cases, but above all, it is the decline of France's geopolitical influence in Africa. This suggests a loss of momentum. Have the networks lost of their effectiveness? The French bait no longer attracts interest, so it is better to exit before everything collapses and tongues start to loosen. Thus, the presumed Roth's child and luck struck again when in a post-COVID period where transportation costs have skyrocketed worldwide, the group manages to sell its African assets estimated between 2 and 3 billion euros for a handsome amount of 5.7 billion. Over a period of more than 40 years, Balleré has built a mini empire that extends from the African logistics industry to French pipelines, encompassing television, Electric Cars, the world's largest music label Universal Music, and many others. In an extremely short time, this single group has become the warden of most neo-colonized countries, by France or the West in general. One of the most effective propaganda tools for Sorrow's Network's content worldwide. Balleray controls Universal Music and nearly a quarter of French media through its subsidiaries, including a leading brand such as Canal Plus. However, Africa is especially crucial for this media monopoly. Africans in search of guidance must not rise, so they must be indoctrinated the Western way. Thanks to its control of Canal Plus and Multi-Choice, the two largest television operators in Africa, liberal content that worships money, violence, pornography, murder, gender issues, marital and mental instability has spread across our continent. These two giants continuously broadcast, in both English and French, to over 50 million African users, these liberal values, which are light years away from the teachings we inherited from the primordial civilization. And the effects are particularly felt among the youth. Balleray has his hands everywhere. 
and it seems to have been accomplished quite strategically, given the speed with which it has occurred. After all, Balare himself confessed that his way of operating is closer to commando tactics than regular army tactics in an article published in Le Mans. Furthermore, Olivier Blamingen, a researcher who has studied this character, even uses the term Blitzkrieg or Lightning War to describe the approach used once the target is confirmed. Privatization, monopolization, corruption, subordination, destruction, and expropriation are all omnipresent elements in Western methods. Is there an agenda of encirclement or suffocation of the continent? Could it be possible that the Rothschilds, who initiated Ballare, together with their networks, as powerful and obscure as they may be, are in overall control? How can we explain that every time this group is implicated in corruption cases, it manages to escape justice in France, then secure more tenders somewhere else? How can we explain that as soon as it leaves, the group comes back under a different name, AGL, African Global Logistics, now under the control of the Italian transport giant MSC? Balare, a name that now resonates with an extensive media empire and considerable influence, raises questions and concerns about the consequences of its activities for the sovereignty of our economy and the preservation of our culture. Only the future will tell if this monopoly will be challenged and if Africa will be able to regain its voice and its independent identity in a geopolitical, economical, and especially mediatic landscape that is more conducive than ever. It is important to note that some of this information consists of allegations and criticisms against Vincent Ballare and the Ballare Group. Legal investigations and court cases are underway for some of the allegations mentioned, and it is necessary to let the justice system do its work to establish the facts and responsibilities. It should also be noted that many other significant or serious facts have not been mentioned because the tracks have been covered. For example, the centenary persecution of the Bijan people in Ivory Coast, who have refused to give up their lands on which the capital Abidjan is built, and who face continuous economic, legal, and all sorts of attacks from Western multinationals, particularly from Balare. A question for you, did you know that a single person, with a far-reaching group, held such influence on the continent? And if not, what do you think is the reason for this lack of information? Do let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Echoes of Current Affairs.